Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Today, Skylum Software updated Luminar AI. They're calling it Update 4. It's version 1.4. In this update is a new tool, Portrait Boca AI, which I think is amazing. So for most of this video, I'm going to be demoing Portrait Boca AI, but two other tools received enhancements, and I want to mention those very quickly. First, Sky AI. If I go to that and I pick a sky for this image, you'll see it replace the sky like it always does. And in the past, you had a vertical position slider, let's say, and you would move the slider. Well, this new enhancement for this tool is this horizontal position button. Click on it, and you'll notice that the image will now have a gradient overlay on it. With this, you could just click it and drag it to move its vertical position. You also could affect the feathering at the area of transition there by just clicking and dragging either of the outer lines and you could increase the feathering at that area there. Also you could rotate it. Just come off it a little bit and then click and drag to rotate it or spin it. So you could adjust the sky. So it's a little more precise in my opinion and I think this is a welcome addition. You could see it affects the reflection as well. So that is a very nice new thing added to the Sky AI tool. The other tool that received an enhancement is in local masking, textures. If I add a texture, now you could see the actual texture you're replacing. You see I have these little squares to show you the texture. So you get a better, I guess, look at what you're doing. So that's a nice enhancement as well. Personally, I don't really use textures, but for those of you that do, I'm sure you'll welcome that. Now, I mentioned the new thing is this new tool, Portrait Boca AI. Let's get an image that will work with that. Let's do this one. So we'll go to Edit. And the Portrait Boca AI tool is in the Portrait section. And if I roll that open, you'll see there's an amount slider. Now, the first time you move the amount slider, it may take a few seconds to kick in. That's because the first time you move it, it has to examine the image and calculate the mask, find where the people are and all that. But after you do it once, it's super responsive. So let's see how fast it is. I'm just going to click right in the middle. And it was pretty quick on my computer. But sometimes that may take a few seconds. Now once I added that amount of bokeh, it's super responsive. So as I move it to the right, I'm adding more. Move it to left, I'm decreasing. So you can see it's pretty cool. Very responsive. You have a lot of control over this. First of all, you have brush control. If I take my cursor and just move it over the image, you can see a brush appears and a mask appears. It masked the person in the shot, um, but you can see maybe it missed a little. Like this part down here probably should be part of the mask. It shouldn't be defocused. So you could click on the focus brush and I could add to that. So I could click on there and add. It also has a defocus brush. So if there's anything that you want defocused, you could click, let's say, and defocus that area. Now, if you just want to restore your, the mask back to the way it was, all you need to do is click on the restore brush and then go and just brush over those areas that need to be restored. And then you'll restore it back the way it was. You also have a radius slider, so you could affect the, the size of the brush, the softness of the brush, and the opacity of the brush. Now, the main thing um, that gives you more control, I think, over the actual bokeh is this area down here, background. Make sure you roll that open because that's by default um, closed. And the main slider is this depth correction. Uh, let's move, add a lot of blur just for this demo. All right. So if I go to depth correction and I want to move the blur closer to the camera, I would take this depth correction and move it to left. And you can see how it's blurring out closer to the camera. If I want to move it further away from the camera, move it to the right. So you could really affect the actual location of the blur or your depth of field with the depth correction slider. Now the other sliders affect that background as well. You can make the background brighter, background darker. You could make the highlights, give them glow. I say blow them out. Like you move it to the right and you blow them out. I'm not so sure that's glow. You can make them brighter. You could also make the background warmer by moving the slider to the right. Cooler, move it to left. Depth correction we talked about. Edge correction. 
Um, notice if I move it to the far right compared to if I move it to the far left. You can see how when it's at the far left, I'm getting a little bit more of her hair and a little bit more of her hoodie in focus. But if I move it to the right, I'm kind of blurring out the edge of her hair and the edge of her hoodie. So you could affect the edges with that slider and kind of get your you know, uh, subject masked out properly with that. Let's uh, go to another image and I'll show you a few more little tricks with this tool. So we'll go to this one, I think. We'll go to Edit. We'll go to Portrait Bokeh. And let's add some bokeh to this. We'll click there and it kicked in very quickly. All right. Now, as far as the brush is concerned, I'll give you some keyboard shortcuts, right? Instead of moving sliders, you could go hover over the image and you could move the right bracket key to make it larger, left bracket key smaller. If you want to affect the softness, hold the shift key and left bracket key will decrease softness. Right, back, right bracket key increases softness. Um, if you want to jump between the focus and defocus brush, just tap on the X key. So the X key will go from focus to defocus. Hit the X key again and you'll jump back to focus. If you want to jump or just temporarily jump between focus and restore, hold in the Alt or Option key, Alt on a PC, Option on a Mac, and just hold that in and you'll jump over to restore and then let go of it and you'll jump back to focus. Now if you're in defocus and you hold in that Alt Option key, it will jump over to focus first and then over to restore. Kind of, so it kind of gets defocus out of the out of the equation. Um, if you want to see the mask without hovering over the image, hit the forward slash key. Just tap it, and you'll see the mask. If you want to get rid of that mask when you're not hovering over the image, hit that forward slash key again. So those are some keyboard shortcuts that might help you navigate this tool a little better. Now for this image. If I hover over it, let's just say I want the hands to be kind of blurred as well. I want the blur to come real well forward maybe. And I want the hands to be more blurred. All right, just, it doesn't look good, but I'm just trying to demo it. But let's just say, so I'm going to go to defocus with the brush control, right? And then we'll brush in here like this. Now it, it's very, very soft, so it may not look right like that and you can see how it added the blur but there is like a hard ed or a soft edge there so it's not looking right so what I could do then is I could take softness down get a smaller brush I have the left bracket key and I could come in here and try to more precisely or not pr more precisely but just get rid of that kind of soft edge and you can see that I'm kind of screwing up a little bit but it still you know, so you'd have to work on it. So you could go to the restore brush and then kind of restore this edge the way it was. Restore over here. Stuff like that. It doesn't look quite right, does it? But you'd have to work on it. This is probably the hardest example I could have chose because there's like all this fine little bends and detail in here. And then go to the uh, focus and I could maybe increase softness bring down opacity a little and then come in here get a bigger brush and kind of come in here like this. Okay. Yeah, that looks ridiculous. But hopefully you get the idea. Or you could just go back to restore, get the biggest brush you can, go to opacity like that and just start over like that. So that hopefully gives you some ideas how you could use this Portrait Boca AI uh, brush. Uh, first of all, that's way too much blur. Tone it down a little bit. Move it that way a little bit. So that's pretty cool. Uh, here, let me give you a before after. There's before and there's after. Let's try another one just for fun. Let's try something that isn't like in the city, something out in nature. We'll go to edit, we'll go to that portrait bokeh and we'll click it up. Takes a second to kick in. Yeah, so it kind of blurred out the background. Again, you probably, at least I would, I'd jump down to the depth correction probably more readily than everywhere else. Go to edge correction. Make sure all our hair is in focus. So that's pretty cool. There is before and there is after. 
So you can see it's pretty responsive. I think it is. I'm kind of surprised at how responsive it is. Let's I'll pick another one. Let's go to this one. I'll add some blur here. Yeah, I think this one, it works real well. I kind of like this. Yeah, there's before and there's after. And you can see that it nails the mask pretty much every time. Pretty interesting. And just for wrapping it up, let's do another one. Let's do this one. Go to edit, portrait bokeh, add some blur there. All right, and then we could, let's say, move it a little closer to our person. And then here, maybe we'll blow out those highlights like that. Right, I think that looks pretty cool. Maybe warm it up just a touch. And just like that, there's before and there's after. So Portrait Bokeh AI, I think it's a really nice tool, especially for many of us that just can't afford those. 1.4 aperture lenses, you know, that give you that real shallow depth of field. Um, you know, maybe we only could afford a kit lens and this will help you achieve uh, those results that those more expensive lenses um, offer. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.